Hi, hi, hi. Let's see if I put this here, if it'll be steady. I am live. I think I am live. I just left bar class, so a bit of a sweaty mess. So please excuse the sweaty hair. Okay, so things I wish I knew. I wrote myself a note here before I started really getting into crystals. <laughs> hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Hi, hi. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people piling in here. Yay. I'm in my car. I just left my bar class and um, I noticed this was kind of a popular um, blog post and post on Facebook today. So I figured I would um, elaborate a little bit on it and just go over a couple things really quick here. So um, yeah. Hi, Willow. Glad you can make it. Hi, Melissa and Ellen. Hello. Okay, so if you guys would do me a favor, if you tap on the screen, you can share this out on Facebook in your newsfeed and let other people in our community know. Hi, CJ. Hi, Mary. About these live streams on Facebook for our metaphysical community because uh, we really want our community to get on this kind of technology too, right? Hi, Rory. Hey, Amber. Um, oh, Amber, I missed your comment there. I didn't see it. It flew by so fast. There's a lot of people piling in here right now. I guess this is the time to do a live stream. My goodness. Right now it is 735 Eastern Standard Time for me. I'm in South Florida. And hey, you know what? I'm going to lock my doors because they were open. And the sun is going down. I wonder if I can. Yeah, here, let me flip your look and see what's going on. All right, so that is Federal Highway, and the sun is going down behind that tree. It's kind of a cloudy day today, so not um, not a great sunset, not a colorful sunset. Yeah, it is beautiful though, isn't it? It's still beautiful. What is this little thing? Oh, okay. I I wasn't. I'm playing with the buttons here. All right. So is that the right? to share can you guys tell me is that the right way to share this on Facebook if you tap the screen you can share can someone tell me if that's the right way to do it hi Tammy hi Nella I hope I pronounced your name correctly uh, thank you Mary okay so I'm going to um, start with some of the um, things I just wrote down a couple things based off of that blog post um, hi Sandra and Michelle says yes. So I assume yes, that's how you share. You tap on the screen and you can share it. Okay, thanks, Christine. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Mary. Hi, Diane. Oh my gosh, there's so many people piling in. All right, um, and then I'll take questions when I'm done. All right, how does that sound? Sound good? Hi, Selena and Kristen. Okay, Kristen said yes, you tap to share. So tap and share. Tap and share, everybody, please. All right, so um, I'm not going to go over all of them on my blog post, but just a couple, and then we'll we'll discuss, okay? And you can discuss amongst yourselves, too, you know, because you can comment. You're commenting live. This video is live on Facebook now. Your commenting is live. I'm seeing you now, and um, Mary says she can't share for some reason. Hmm. All right, and Jenna says it doesn't work for her. I have to close the video. No, the video only stops for a second, and then it comes right back. I heard that. Somebody told me that. All right. I haven't been able to try it myself because I haven't seen uh, too many other people doing the Facebook live streaming yet. So I'll be able to check that out myself as soon as I see somebody doing a live Facebook in my newsfeed. I would love to try it. Okay. Yeah, I love these too, Michelle. All right. So one thing I wish I knew when I first started out with crystals is the best way to cleanse. Because the first thing I found out was there was all these different ways to quote unquote cleanse your crystals. I have a whole philosophy on that. Um, you might want to look up my blog post on myths, crystal healing myths or crystal myths and hibiscus moon. Put that in Google and you will find that blog post. But for me, after much trial and error, and trying all the fancy schmancy ways of cleansing because they look like fun unless you have a lot of time um, or you really enjoy doing the very ritual ceremonial types of cleansings which I do sometimes but not all the time sometimes most of the time 
to be totally honest with you, I want it to be quick, easy, practical, that I can fit it into my everyday life. So for me, and also because you have to be mindful, some crystals can't be in extreme temperatures, can't be in water, um, different things like that you have to keep in mind. You have to check the most hardness and all of this. So for me, the best method of cleansing, the easiest, most practical, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, chemical content, most hardness, is sound. Use high amplitude sound. That's a fancy schmancy science term for loud. <laughs> and it, it can be a nice, pretty crystal singing bowl. It can be tuning forks. Or as I told someone today, it can even be turning your radio on very loud and that is high amplitude sound. Now, I do prefer not to blast out like, I don't know, Jane's Addiction or something to cleanse my crystals, although technically, scientifically, that is supposed to do the exact same thing. I prefer to do something that's pleasing to my ears. Tinctures are nice, but they don't seem high amplitude enough. They're very gentle and soft, so I like using my crystal singing bowl or a tuning fork, okay? Um, so that's my take on that. All right. Number two, I wanted to go over was there's a lot of confusion in the naming of lots of minerals because some people have, have decided to trademark, trademark certain minerals that already have a proper geological mineral name. They already have a mineral name, but someone has decided to call them something woo woo, something fancy schmancy something that's going to appeal to our metaphysical market and boy does it work it works so they'll take something like uh, a quartz mass that's a cloudy milky quartz mass and trademark it with a trademark name okay this so some people will not realize that you know they can go to a gem show and buy what they don't realize is a zestulite for very, very affordable price, very affordable price because it's just a milky quartz mass that in fact most rock shops won't even sell because they think it's worthless. But if you call it a zestulite, then you get a whole other price for it. Now, granted, a lot of these trademark stones have to come from a certain area. So they will only call it that if it comes from a certain area. But then some not so up and up sellers will take advantage of that because they know you can't know where it came from originally and they'll go oh milky quartz rock i found it in my backyard as zestulite put that name on it slap it on there and all those metaphysical folks will be drooling over it and paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for it so it's to your advantage to know some geology a little bit kind of get behind when you see that little tm or R with a circle around it, that means it's a registered trademark. TM means that it's in the process of being registered and R means it's been done, it's a done deal, it's been around for a while, so it's older and in place. When you see that, do a little research, Googling, and find out what mineral that actually is and then buy it under that mineral name and you will pay much, much less price for it. Keep that in mind. All right, and then this is another kind of shopping tip. And this will be my last one and then I'll answer all your questions because I see lots of um, stuff flying by. All right, um, when you are shopping at a rock shop, a rock hound shop, or a gem show, no woo-woo talk. No woo-woo talk. Don't go in there saying, I need a crystal for my third eye, or I'm looking for trigonic record keepers, or do you have a channeler crystal? Don't say any of that stuff. Know what you're looking for. So if you need a channeler, find out what a channeler is, how to identify a channeler when you see it. Find out what a trigonic record keeper is and how to identify one when you see it. And then just look for it. Get you and a partner to look for it or you can ask and say, do you have any crystals, like if you're looking for a trigonic record keeper, do you have any crystals that have like an indented triangle on the face? I think those could kind of neat. Don't tell them why you want it or don't throw any woo-woo metaphysical names out there. I did that in the beginning. I would yell it across. I said this in the blog post to my husband. I need this and this for my third eye chakra to balance, whatever. Look for that. Frank is really, really good, my husband. <laughs> 
at locating. Um, he's very good at finding the visual characteristics and sometimes hit will back and forth and he'll be like, uh, is this a Dow, you know, and stuff like that. I'm like, no, 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 shh, 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 shh. because as soon as they hear, because the rock people are, you know, after my years of going to gem shows, even in Tucson, they are on to these names. They know what they are. They're looking them up. They're educating themselves, even if they don't believe in any of it. And they're putting the names on the rocks and then they're ratcheting up the prices on them. Um, most of the rock dealers don't know this stuff, and but they, if they get wind that you do and that's what you're into, they will ratchet up the prices for the metaphysical community because they know that those kinds of crystals, although for other collectors might not have much value, have a lot of value to us because we know how valuable they are. So I liken it to keeping your superhero outfit undercover like Superman did. Don't let everybody know that you have a big S on your chest and you know what these crystals are good for. Okay. <laughs> That's how I say it. All right. So let me see. Cheryl says you inspired. Thank you so much, CJ. Good to know. Yeah. These are just good tips to know. Little things that um, I picked up along the way that I'd like to share with you all. All right. Any other questions from you guys about any of that on that topic? And I'm just going to have some water here. Thank you for all that you share with us, Amy. Oh, you're welcome. Amy, I, it's my total pleasure. My true and total pleasure. Mm. The sunset is looking nice now, but a guy is parked right in front of me. So let me just show you. All right. What is a good master stone and what size do you like? Lori, are you talking about master crystals? I don't have a favorite master crystal. Um... Uh, Dows are pretty nice. A transmitter crystal and Chandlers are nice too. Does size matter? Yes. Organite info, please. Uh, Google Hibiscus Moon Organite and you will find my blog post on that. Sarah says, thank you. Love this opportunity. Thank you. I love this opportunity also. Selena says, 2012 Quartz trademark. <laughs> what is that? A new one? I haven't heard of that one yet, uh, but there's new ones coming out all the time. You're welcome, Nella. How do you know the right stone? You mean, how do you know the right stone to use, Suzanne, for what you want to do? Well, a little bit of learning comes into play there. And coincidentally, my certified crystal healer course is gonna be opening up soon. Did you talk about Orlite 23 and Thunder Bay Amethyst? No, not specifically, but um, Orlite 23 is not trademarked. Um, and look up Hibiscus Moon or Light 23 and you'll see my uh, blog post video about that. What is the best stone to, for manifestation? Thanks so much, amazing information. Um, best stone, well, there's lots of them, but I go with citrine, easiest, most affordable, and it's really, really great for manifestation. Uh, I recently went to Ron Coleman's mine and found some amazing clear quartz. Oh, Damien, wasn't that fun? I just did that too. We just went digging at Ron Coleman's, amazing. How do you charge your stones? I don't buy into the philosophy of charging my stones. Um, Christina, that's just not part of my um, repertoire. All right, hold the questions. I'm going to show you this set because now it's looking pretty. Pretty. And I think, yeah, the guy's coming back to his car, so I'll show you the guy. He doesn't know we're filming him, so. <laughs> He's going to the gym. Not to bar class, though. Hey, dude, turn out your lights. All right, the questions. All right, um, you bought two citrine piece, pieces the other day. We'll see intuitively you knew what you needed. You knew what you needed there, Michelle. All right, a couple more questions and then I gotta hit it, guys. I gotta go home. Topaz is waiting for me, Frankie. How do you activate your crystal grids? Oh, Willow, that's kind of a little bit of a process, but it's not too involved. Um, you can look up my blog posts, Hibiscus Moon, crystal grids. Um, I don't know if I give exactly the information on how to activate, but it's in my book, my book, bestseller on Amazon, crystal grids, how and why they work. Uh, Michelle says, hi, so happy to be here. Um, when someone says quartz is dubbed Lemurian quartz or Tibetan quartz, how do you know for sure it all looks the same to me? Well, actually, um, Tibetan is kind of hard to, uh, Tibetan quartz usually has black inclusions in it. Lemurians always, always have ridges that you can feel on the sides, ridges, horizontal ridges on the facets that you can feel. And they should technically come from the um, Diamantina mine in Brazil. Okay. Um, 
what's a good crystal for third eye chakra? Oh, Healing Hands, we just, my crystalline cohorts and I, we just did a private live uh, play date today to activate and balance our third chakra today. And Amethyst is all time favorite, easiest one, hands down for third eye. All right, two more questions. Have trouble coming up with a business name so hard, overthinking, I think. Oh, this is a totally different topic here. Uh, Michelle, I suggest going to your business Facebook page and surveying your people on that page. And if you belong to my Energize, um, your biz, um, your heart and soul centered biz mastermind, come on in there and brainstorm with the mastermind. We'd love to do that. Um, and Clara says, any stone for protection? Thanks for the opportunity. Well, I don't know specifically protection from what, but in general, um, jet, which is a light black shiny stone, um, and black tourmaline are great for that. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you all soon. Namaste. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.